Do, do you, you want to start, start a, country? a country? Well, technically you can in three yes. parts of the world. It's One, actually not that hard as long as you find land and you're able to defend it. The problem is if there are people that don't want you to have that land. You might find yourself battling against the entire U.S. Navy. One is Bur Tawil, which is an unclaimed piece of land due to border disagreement between, between Egypt and, and Sudan. Sudan. Nobody wants that. But you that. could also do it in these few pockets. The problem with that is if they claim that territory, then no one's going to get this giant triangle over here. See, they both want this stuff, obviously. Both nations want this. It's coastal. It's bigger. Nobody wants this. You you probably wouldn't have a good time just taking this. You'd probably run into a lot of problems if you just went there randomly. But you could All right, also next do spot. it in these few pockets of unclaimed land between between Croatia and Serbia. And really? you can also do it in Antarctica, as some parts of it are unclaimed. Okay. You would have to then go to that place, build a country there, and get the UN to recognize it. Uh, that's not that much of a difficult task, to have the United Nations recognize you. By the way, this is the list of unrecognized people and groups by the UN. There's a whole lot going on here, obviously. If you're rich enough and have enough people and enough resources, maybe. Plus, there are plenty of members that weren't at first recognized that ended up becoming recognized. So anything is possible, technically. There's also a lot of people that have actually withdrew, even. You'd easily be able to face the least resistance in Antarctica, obviously. The only war is you'd have to fight her against these creatures. Nice, Lord Donut. What, what if Germany, Germany got really started World started War II today? War today. Oof, this, well, probably wouldn't go that well for them. At least they wouldn't be as successful as World War II, I think. Today Let's see. Stronger than before. Yeah. With Germany attacking them first, they would be able to throw a punch Especially back, because they're close. be overrun in the end. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. If it was a one-on-one -on -one fight for whatever unlimited time, maybe. But don't forget that Poland technically has a stronger military than Germany, according to this. And a lot of this just has to do to their proximity to Russia. They have to keep a strong military because Russia's a giant threat to them. Meanwhile, Poland's trying to increase their defense budget to 10% by next year. So it's only getting bigger. We're running in the end. This would really anger the Allies. Germany would I have guess... problems attacking France because of the line of bunkers across their border called the Maginot Line. I don't Germany think they have that would anymore. would have to declare war on the Benelux countries and would quickly run through them. However, I don't the think French that troops would be getting ready, accompanied by British help coming from the north. They would free the Benelux states and, with their help, would march towards Berlin, and just taking it easily, them... winning the war. Uh... I don't know. Germany adds 0 0.0001 cent to military budget, YouTubers. Yeah, I feel like there's just a little organization that would keep this from happening. Little thing called NATO, maybe you've heard of it. This is why I said Germany could literally just not do World War II strats, even if they wanted to. They'd be surrounded in 0 0.013 seconds. I don't know why I went with that specific number, but we'll go with it. Thank you for that 60 second club. What if if America was never was discovered, never discovered by, this guy? by this guy, that's the specific, by no, no Christopher Columbus. Just discovered okay. that there is more land in the well, world. Someone was going to find it. People aren't as advanced yet to develop things like guns. I would assume there might be a. Yes, thank you. The, These yes. guys saw an opportunity. Well, remember, it was discovered by someone before Christopher Columbus, but the Vikings just left. They're like, nah, we're good with this. And started creating their empire onto these lands. However, let's say Americas were never discovered. Just Firstly, never? European countries would still be in the Dark Ages. Ottomans uh, would be the superpower of Europe. That did help India pull them out. India would still be under Mughal or some Muslim empire, while China would continue China its might... cycle of massive empires and, and then, then collapsing. breaking up in Americas, USA would of course not exist. Yes. And there would be its own countries like Incan and Mayan empire. Anyways, Aztecs. Subscribe. What? I need more! I need way more. Viking Explorer, Lee Erickson, crying in the corner. And I thought the question kind of alluded that another continent would eventually discover America. So if Europe never discovered America, my immediate thought is maybe China would eventually. You know what? If I had to make a guess, immediately that comes to mind is when Russia gets super huge and starts to colonize Siberia and eventually gets to Alaska, it might be them. Like, it just makes the most sense geographically speaking. Because regardless if the Spanish or Portuguese discovered it, Russia was on a collision course with Alaska. So at the very least, this would have happened and then word would have spread and then maybe there'd been like a giant race. But that still would have given the Native Americans another 200 years to develop at least. I feel like at least the Incan Empire would have gotten pretty big. Who knows what would have happened with the Aztecs? Thank you, Info Hub. Are Countries that change sides. sides during the Second World War. But There's a lot of memes about that. All the countries that switch sides during both world wars. There was a there was 
a lot in Eastern Europe for sure, but remember they didn't really have a choice. In the Great it's War, like they're Italy gonna get also part of forced. The power alliance. Allied with Germany this is why they say Italy just changed sides because technically there was an alliance Italy had with Germany and Austria-Hungary, and then obviously they ended up joining the Entente. Technically switched sides and went to war against their former allies. True. The power alliance was a I defensive mean, alliance. So when Franz Ferdinand of Austria was assassinated, it could have been interpreted as an act of aggression by Serbia. So Going the defensive the alliance, World War, yeah. Many countries in Eastern Europe were forced to switch sides when the Soviet exactly. Union walked into their core territory. Yeah, and when then, the Red Army reached Bulgaria, they entered the country without being at war with them, which prompted Bulgaria, Bulgaria to immediately Romania, switch sides, becoming a communist country. A I mean, similar situation was seen in Romania, that. where they cooperated with the Soviet Union. Thanks to the and then the US, Romanian the Allies are going to force Italy to do that same Michael thing. The first. Finland also kind of switched sides in 1944, as they wanted to abandon Germany. Uh, so that's Finland a good point. A beast. That's an interesting point. I guess you could make that argument that Finland kind of switched sides. They were briefly working with the Germans, but it, they had a mutual enemy. But also forget Yugoslavia technically switched sides. They were in the Axis for a whopping four days before the British-led coup overthrew the former government. World War One, it was a defensive pact. World War Two, it was a civil war. <laughs> that was, that's the Italian argument. Nice job rewriting history. Why did, Why did Russia, Russia conquer Siberia? Conquer Siberia. There literally nothing out there at the time. Yeah. That's at a good first, question. Russia went into Siberian land to prevent raiding into their big cities. And they were still dealing with hordes out there for money. But once Russia realized nobody was going to stop them if they just kept going east, they decided to conquer the entire Why not? Because it's basically free real, real estate. estate. Siberia yeah. had very little people and it didn't cost the government a lot of money to govern. And still to conquer. this day, it has very little people and very, very rural. It helped secure Russia's position by preventing hostile armies from conquering their land in the West. Just like Yeah, because China would have taken all that. A few centuries prior to this. Russia also conquering literally one eighth of the Earth's surface also gave it respect and fear amongst the European powers. And they were trying that would to be one of the reasons why Russia was considered a great power thereafter. Yeah, remember that they really wanted to look cool in front of their senpai, the Europeans. Peter the Great, who led Russia in the 1700s, really wanted to make his country more like France and Great Britain. Starting newspapers, opened schools, even forced men of Russia to shave their beards. They really wanted to be respected during this time. History now, thank you. These you won't believe these facts. facts that sound fake, France but are and their time zones did you know that the island nation of montserrat doesn't have a single person living in its capital this is because of uh, a volcanic eruption back in the 1990s I actually which did left not the city know completely that completely covered in ash and it has been abandoned ever since to Moving be fair on, i did the not fact know that. that california is actually more northern than canada taking a closer look what? at the northernmost point of california compared to canada's southernmost point we can see that california oh. is about 18 kilometers further north following that oh. hawaii and okay. alaska that's the fine most and <laughs> northernmost U.S. states both have a temperature record of 38 degrees Celsius. Wow. the fact that they are over 5,000 kilometers wow, apart. Wow, that's Shifting interesting. Gears, China, the world's third largest country, only has one time zone. And lastly, France yeah, has 12 I different that. time zones. And, and even then, 13 if we include its claim and in And this Antarctica. is not surprising. This is due to its widespread overseas territories yes, around the globe. I've showed that map many times. Those first three facts really got me. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to China's time zone, it's just easier for them to all function in one. It is kind of complicated, the fact that we divide up our countries between different times. And yeah, obviously France is going to have a lot of different time zones if you are familiar with the French overseas map. The French actually have maintained way more of their former empire than the British have in a way. The British still have a lot, but they're not in quite as many time zones. Also, when considering for French Guyana over here, this is a huge chunk of land France still has outside of the European continent. Like that, that's a massive territory that they still own today, which, you know, obviously all these other things are just islands. Everything in Antarctica is kind of still disputed territory. Yeah, a lot of time zones here. WTF do you mean by more northern than Canada? That was a weird phrase, yes. Very nice geography beast. Did Europe you know that technically is technically an island. Western Europe and the southern Balkans and are And this an is island? going to be because of a river, yes, a very big, big river. And actually, it comes up quite often. Europe, the Rhine River, which starts in right Switzerland now. and ends in the Netherlands, a lot of ships in Germany pass through, the through this area. Danube Canal with a Danube River. The Danube, the Danube then flows Danube. through Central Europe and the Balkans to end in Romania. This is a the big sea. By topic, definition, an especially island is with a piece the invasion of, of Ukraine and Russia, completely surrounded by water. So technically, this part of Europe is an island. You could actually say the same the thing River, for the a large part of North America: the Black Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, the Atlantic Ocean, and the North Sea. So right now, all Look, of these you guys can just, in theory, can consider islands. themselves island nations. By definition, yeah, that. 
there's nothing they're right. Yes, you can sail from this river to the Great Lakes. This is called the Great Loop. So by that previous definition, this part of the US is also an island. We should probably update the definition of island, to be quite honest. I love this definition though. A thing resembling an island. That's a great definition of island. Especially in being isolated, detached, or surrounded in some way. Okay, that I like this part of it. This is also oh, another reason why island is not a good definition, because uh continents technically are surrounded by water, but we don't so I'll call them islands. We need to redefine so many geography terms. Nice job, Worldwide Sub. We Finally, we have an update peaceful, here. So what is the we just peak? reviewed a meep, a meep, a meep map, a map meme. There was a previous short that was talking about Europe as the, the most peaceful continent when, historically speaking, it's not. Peaceful continent. What Firstly, is it Asia actually? Asia isn't either because it has too many rivalries. And yes. most importantly, I think it North might be Korea, South America. Which is arguably the least peaceful nation. Africa is better True. than Asia, but still has instability due to really? separate regions so? like Somalia. There is a ton of really small conflicts happening in Africa at all times. We're talking coups and mercenary wars. There's Africa's really chaotic. We just don't hear about it. Land in Western Sahara. North America has a lot of cartel activity in Mexico and Central American yes. nations, while South has the most underrated war going on between Venezuela, Guyana, and Suriname. This leaves only Oceania oh, as the that's most right. peaceful continent. Oh, dang, I'm dumb. Well, it should be Antarctica, I guess. I completely forgot about Oceania, yeah. Meanwhile, Antarctica. Turns out, answering what is the most peaceful continent is actually a little more complicated than I thought. Thank you for that map, lad. Please go subscribe to all these channels. Big ol' thanks to my patrons. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. Lucas, the Canadian King goose Bear from Avaca. Du har förvisat från Sverige för brottet att vara dans. MGM, L.U. Lager, Archaeology, Arsat, Carmel S, Connor Pabuf, Megan, Brendan, Dad, Back with the Milk, Lookouts, Wizards, Kansas, Sevi, if you hear this, and Tamron, 